Grandma DC here. <laughs> and Scud, who's bumping me. He says, why are you talking to yourself? It freaks me out. All right, guys. I have good news. Speckles showed back up, my chicken. I have a little footage of her. I might try to find it again and put it at the end. Uh, I have no idea where she was hiding. And so she's back, and we've got all eight of them again. I gave in since it was such a beautiful sunny day today, and I let them out into the yard. I just can't keep them cooped up unless it's icing and raining, which it's supposed to on Monday. So I don't know how bad. It probably it might not be too bad. That's the way it goes around here. Ice one day and snow, and then the next day it's 50 degrees and melts off. Bert, how are you today? He says, I'm wondering why that dog is knocking you in the back. Scudner, where's my hug? Hug, hug. Oh, there's my daily hug, hug. Scud's been mad at me. Yes, you have been mad at me. He was mad at me because he got out the front door the other day when I was trying to blow some leaves off the front deck. And I had to chase him down with a bag of goodies. And I ended up feeding him to the neighbor's dog because he acted like he did not know me. I have no idea who you are and I'm not coming back. <laughs> he was really being bad. And when he did come over to get a treat and I caught him, I told him he was a bad boy all the way home. I was just impressed that I could carry a 19-pound dog and walk a quarter mile back up my driveway. <laughs> I couldn't have done that before the carnivore diet, and I lost all that weight. Could I, Scott? No, I could not have done that. So for the last two days, he's been, like, avoiding me. He's also mad about the kitty cats getting in my lap. There's a little bit of jealousy going on there. Yeah, that's right. Well, I have more exciting news about weight loss and carnivore diet. I think I am staying the same. If you saw my last video, I'm still at 238. And I'm perfectly happy with that because, as we have discussed, any diet, keto, carnivore, you get to a point where your body says, this is good. I could not eat at all, and I would stay at 238. However, and as some of you have mentioned before, but you might be losing size. Oh, so true. <laughs> I'm not using a measuring tape. I don't own one. But I went to Walmart the other day and they had jeans in the men's department for $5. Well, you can't pass that up, can you? And I thought, there's no way I could get into a 38. A 38 jean on a man is like a 16 on a woman, plus the thighs are way too small. But they were a little stretchy. For five bucks, I took a chance. And they fit! <laughs> can, you, can you see me? Can we see? Can we see? <laughs> I could not believe! These are 38 men's, and I got into them. So that was really exciting for me. Not to mention I got three pairs of jeans for $15 and some tax. <laughs> That'll get me through the winter. And I think these will fit for a while. Because they're nice and snug. <laughs> but they're not cutting off my breathing. So we're good, as Mother would say. As long as you can still breathe and the blood can get to your toes, all good. Alright, today we're going to do a carnivore keto-friendly cheesecake. And yes, this is something special for the holidays. It's not something I'd recommend all the time, unless you're on keto and you're doing fat bombs. And this would be like a giant fat bomb because I haven't found my smaller spring form pan, so we're going to make a big one. Enough to feed your whole family. The great thing about cheesecake, though, is that it freezes really well. Just You can cut pieces, big chunks off and just freeze it and bring it back out for the holidays or whenever you need to take a dessert for something. I know I get kind of upset or embarrassed, you know, sometimes when I'm dieting like this, and going to someone else's house and saying, yeah, I only want your meat. All that other goodie that you slaved over, I can't eat it or won't. And uh, that, it just makes me feel bad. So I think it's always great to be able to take something like a dessert so that you can have something else. Well, we're going to do it in picture form too. Because again, I know you all know how to cook. 
We've done this before in the past. Other people have cheesecake recipes. I might do another one that's no bake, but I've got to check out some carbs on some sugar-free Cool Whip. And we'll see what that's got in it. And uh, let's get to it. And I hope you enjoy. Like, share, and subscribe to keep up with the insanity. And if I haven't said so before and you want to keep Grandma's videos coming, then you can go click on my funny face, go to my home page down in the corner. It says donate to PayPal. And you can leave a tip that says, hey, I really like that idea. I hope so, and I hope you do. Let's get to it. I want to start by saying these, these are some of the sweeteners I have in my house. You have erythritol, stevia in the raw from Walmart, my favorite organic stevia extract, and I have listed that below on several videos, and I'll try to remember to again, and pure sucralose. Now, I know, I know, some of them will raise your insulin. Some of them have maltodextrin. There's all these bad things and chemicals that are in artificial sweeteners. But for me, stevia does, seems to be the one that doesn't raise your insulin the best. However, it's an acquired taste, and it has kind of a bitter after wang until you get used to it. I really like it in coffee, teas, things like that. But, like I said, I do realize it's an acquired taste. And for this, since other people might be eating it, I think we're going to go with uh, the Walmart Stevia in the raw and maybe some erythritol in the topping. Alright, let's get to it. We're going to start with four chubs of cream cheese. These are six ounce packages of cream cheese along with four eggs. Be sure to add them to your softened cream cheese. Plus a tablespoon of vanilla. I'm going to start with a half a cup of the uh, stevia from Walmart. It's lighter and sweeter. I know it's got additives, but uh, I think it'll bake better. Then we're going to get the beaters and beat this all up together and then taste it. And if we need to, we'll add more sweetener. Beat it just enough to incorporate everything. It's okay if it looks chunky at this point. Next, we're going to add a cup of sour cream along with a cup of heavy whipping cream. And then we're going to beat it all together again. The batter will be thick. Don't be upset if it's a tiny bit chunky. I kind of like it that way. Cut a piece of parchment paper to go in the bottom of your springform pan and spray it with nonstick cooking spray. At this point, you're pretty much done. If you want a plain cheesecake, this is it. Five carbs for the whole thing, because it's one carb and two tablespoons of sour cream, and I counted them. There was ten tablespoons, so that makes five carbs for the whole thing. But we're going to kick this up a notch. After you put your parchment paper in here and you've sprayed everything so it's non-stick, I have some pecans. And I am going to put them in with some butter, some sweetener. Erythritol is my choice for this because it kind of hardens a little bit like sugar. Mm -hmm. And we're going to toast with the butter and erythritol the pecans. And we're going to put them in the bottom of this pan. And we kind of crush them up a little. So it'll be like a caramel pecan topping. Uh, also, you put a little heavy whipping cream in with that uh, butter and uh, erythritol, and it makes a caramel. Oh, I'll take pictures. Just watch. We've done this before. I wanted you to see this part. After you let the butter and the erythritol and the vanilla sort of melt together, I have about a quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. And I've got it boiling really nicely. And we're going to pour that in. And just cook it a little until it gets thickened because otherwise it will break. And we're going to go ahead and add the pecans at this time also. Thank you. 
Okay, 300 degrees for about an hour and 10 minutes, and then check on it. You put your thing in here, your thing, your, what do you call that thing? Cook cookies on it, usually. And I pour in some hot water. I just like to do that so it doesn't cool down. And then just sit your pan, and you really do need a springform pan for this, right in there, and close it up. Now the best part of this whole process, as far as I'm concerned, is the cleanup. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's pretty fabulous. Even without the pecan topping or anything, this cheesecake would be phenomenal. We're going to let it cook for an hour and ten minutes. We're going to check it. It should be a little bit jiggly, but it will raise up somewhat too. And then as you cool it, and you have to cool it completely before you take it out of the pan, in the refrigerator, <laughs> it will shrink back down and be cheesecake. Good news. We found Speckles. Where she was hiding last night, I don't know. Yes, no, I'm not going to feed you any goodies. I don't have any goodies. The cheesecake's not even done yet. And I think this is going to be a good one, so you don't get it. <laughs> you wouldn't have got it anyway. Oh, you're so spoiled rotten. Especially you, Hyder. All right, I'll feed you all goodies tonight so you go back into bed like you should. I may have pulled it a little green, but as you can see, it's starting to crack over there, over here. And when I give it a shake, it doesn't really wiggle. And I would rather pull it out a little green than let it get overdone. Oh, there you go, guys. Cheesecake, we will put in the refrigerator to cool off as soon as it cools off a little here. And then we will flip it over and take another picture. Okay, it's late at night. It's been in the refrigerator all day. It has cooled off. And I'm going to remove the parchment paper. And there's what we have. Pecan caramel cheesecake. Whew, she's a beauty. I think I'll wait till tomorrow to have a piece. <laughs> but... I did run my fingers around the edge of the pan and it was really good. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy this as an idea. Like I said, you don't have to put the caramel or the pecans on it. You could just bake it. And uh, this thing is huge. This is like a 12 inch. And you can cut that recipe in half and get a smaller cheesecake pan. Usually one egg per chub of cream cheese is what I use. Just let it cool completely before you take it out. I love y'all. Like, share, and subscribe. Keep up with the insanity.